Hey guys, Pitmaster Tinkers podcast. Uh, we're going to go for a drive and we're going to talk today about do I need a water pan for my smoker? So, uh, here, check out my new hat. You can tell it's brand new because it's still got the thing under it. Anyway, so uh, we're going to talk today all about reasons why you would possibly want a uh, water pan in your smoker. So, here we go. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Hey, so uh, Scott and I drive, drive, uh, jumped in the truck here and we're going down the road. Um, anyway, and I made some notes before we left. Uh, we got to go run some errands real quick. But uh, we're going to talk today about, you know, what in the world, why would you need a water pan and a smoker, you know, because a lot of guys think you want it in there for a lot of different reasons. Um, I got my own opinion on that based on my experience. So the first thing we're going to talk about is why would you need a water pan in a smoker? So there's all kinds of myths surrounding water. Uh, you, you, you almost think it's like in a pressure cooker of sorts to where we're gonna you know, steam the inside of the cooker and we're gonna try to force more moisture into uh, whatever we're cooking, like a pork butt or something like that. And I've never really heard anybody but me talk about this, but you guys might know a little bit more about it than me for all I know, but uh, if you if you go out there on the old interwebs and and you run across some guy that's talking about putting water in your thing you almost never hear him say that they put water in there in order to force more moisture into what you're cooking you actually do that during the brine process so water doesn't really help if you're just looking to have you know to keep moisture in your food what it actually does is uh, your foods rendering moisture and fat out of it while it's cooking so really the reason why you want a, uh, a water pan and a smoker is for a heat sink is reason number one um, you know because what we're doing usually you'll see those in like a vertical cooker of some kind whether it's like you know it's a wood fired cooker that the fire is directly under uh, the food where you're cooking There'll be a giant water pan, specifically like a great example is the Myron Mixon series hog cookers or a uh, backwood style vertical reverse flow. You know, your, your fire is directly below where you're cooking. And so you need some kind of a heat sink just to keep the dead blow of the heat from the flames coming up and uh, just roasting the bottom side of what you're cooking. Keeps you from having to flip and rotate a lot, stuff like that. Um, now we talked about moisture a little bit you know it's it's you can have a moisture environment like one place this is handy is like doing chicken um, if you're familiar with the brazing method of cooking that's like where we actually put a foil tent over something or fo wrap it in foil uh, a lot of competition cooking our chicken is cooked that way um, we're gonna try to tint the meat and keep a, a moist environment around it to prevent the skin from drying out on the chicken or uh, you know to prevent from just setting this really hard bark on something so that is a valid reason but it's not going to force more moisture into your food um, a second a third reason here let me look at my thing easy cleanup so uh, one reason we would have a water pan in there is because when all the fat and the juices render out of our food, it goes down and, and sits on that, let's say you had a baffle plate in there, it goes down, sits on that plate and it just carbonizes and turns to this hard stuff that, that just is, you gotta scrape it real hard to get it off. Um, it also can put off like a, a carbonic taste of sorts, just like this bad flavor that you can get. So it definitely helps with cleanup because that, that fat and juices that render down, they're, they're not just gonna sit there and turn into a crust <laughs> on the bottom. A lot of times you can just hose it out. Um, I've even heard about a few guys with, cook with uh, big open offsets. They'll put water in the bottom of their cook chamber just to make it easier to clean up so they can hose it out. So anyway, the, our, our third point is types of smokers where you would want a water pan in them now um, the first one of course is a vertical reverse flow so if you see me looking down I got to look at my notes because I'm trying to stay on topic anyway uh, a vertical reverse flow smoker 
is you know better known as like a, a backwoods or a, a pit maker vault um, different cookers like that and spe specifically what we're looking for there is a heat sink um, so we have our fire directly below the flames come up and hit that pan and on some of them they've got a pitch in the bottom of their water pan so everything's going to come up and go around and flow up to the top and then come back down so we're using that as a heat sink in order to get an even cook chamber temp vertically inside the cook chamber or at least a more even temperature um, another style is just like a vertical wood smoker when you got wood on fire in a firebox, um, Meadow Creek makes one like this, where you're burning wood and charcoal in it, um, or in a scenario where we've got like a firebox on a stick burner with a warming cabinet right above it. Um, we're burning a wood fire, which means we're gonna have a lot more air mass moving, which means we're gonna have a, a actual fire down there and a lot of BTUs at, at one point. So a lot of times we use a quarter inch piece of plate. We might even insulate uh, like double stack that plate and insulate but you still got all that heat coming in from the very bottom so having that water pan in there allows you to to get control of vertically your uh, your temperature difference um, it's just a big old heat sink once again and then the final one that I would say would be more like a big hog cooker um, now I do know for a fact that you can have one heck of a grease fire in a hog cooker if you ain't careful when your wood fire or charcoal fire is directly below the food, if you have nothing but grease and fat rendering down from a hog, especially if you've injected that hog with a lot of uh, injection or something, you can actually get so much grease and stuff down there that you can have a flash fire. Once that fire is coming in direct contact with the bottom of that pan, when grease and fat gets above like 400 degrees, it can flash off 400, 420 degrees. And if that grease is the heat sink under a, like in a Myron Mixon cooker, uh, it could just get out of control. So the biggest reason I would say is as a heat sink and, uh, you know, doubled up with uh, like some moisture control inside the cooking environment. So our final point here we're gonna talk about is uh, using a water pan. So when we, uh, when we have a cooker where we're using a water pan, that lady just pulled out in front of me. When we have a cooker where we're using a water pan, uh, there's a couple of things that you gotta keep in mind. We wanna have a dead even cook chamber temp like throughout our cook. We don't wanna be going up and then down and up and down in uh, temperature. This person's a really bad driver. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry guys. Anyway, uh, we don't want our temperature to have like big swings up and down and up and down. We want to have a dead even cook chamber temp throughout the, the length of our cook. So when you have water in the pan, you need to add, first of all, add hot water to the pan because when the water boils, it's 212 degrees at sea level. So when we have a fire running and we have that water in there, if we have water in there that's 200 degrees or so when we start the cooker up then we're going to have less time to heat that water up and get it to temp whereas if you put 60 degree water in the cook chamber it's going to take us forever to get up to temp so because we'll have to heat the water first before the cook chamber will get hot so add hot water to your water pan before you start the cooker you know before you uh, build your fire and everything and then as the cooker is running, you won't have to heat that water as much when you begin the cook. And then when you add more water during the cook, make sure you add hot water again, like the hottest water you can get. Because if it's, if it's at least close to 200 degrees, you're not gonna have a big temp drop when you add the water to it. Um, another way to do it is whenever you'll see like on some of these backwoods cookers, the competition guys, have a have one of those uh, Culligan jugs, you know, the big five gallon water jug, and they make a contraption that hooks up to the to the water drain valve, and it lets water go in. Uh, basically, it's using gravity 
it's gravity feeding water to that pan and you'll see a glug every once in a while and it's just basically topping off that water pan just a little bit at a time little bit at a time instead of adding you know a gallon of water to that water pan it'll just glug a little bit at a time and it'll prevent you from having that drop in temperature when you add water to it um, don't let it run out of water if you let that uh, water pan go dry your temperature is going to skyrocket all of a sudden. I had that happen a few times over the years on different cookers I built where we get busy or we're visiting or something like that and uh, we forget to add water and you go out there and all of a sudden the temperature would go from 250 to like 400 like just that fast because now you lost all that thermal mass that was in the cooker. Um, you know it just you just got to keep on top of it you can't let it go dry. Um, goodness gracious we're passing the Starbucks here <laughs> anyway and then my final point on this whole water pan thing is clean it every cook so when you uh, shut your cooker down for the night let's say you're done cooking and uh, you got all that water in the bottom of that water pan and uh, there's like this nice layer of grease in it don't leave that in there because what will happen is is that you'll get two things you'll you talk about mold I mean it'll mold the inside of that cooker quicker than you can blink so like the next morning when you get up you'll go outside that has been like this really nice moist very humid uh, 80 degree temperature overnight let's say and uh, the white mold just took over and made penicillin all over the inside of your cooker especially if you leave it for a few days um, then you got to then you basically got to you know clean the cooker and sanitize it again and re-season it but uh, the other thing that you'll run into is that uh, fat will sit on top of that water and uh, it's it gets really gross really stinky like I'm, I'm saying it's just a bad deal all the way around so you want to make sure and keep that cooker clean as soon as you're done cooking drain it clean it out you know wash it up the the worst part to me about one of these water cookers is the cleanup I, I just say that's that's like the thing that i don't want to do is clean them up so uh anyway guys uh you know thanks for listening to the podcast here i hope you found some value in this episode uh you know leave a leave a uh rating on the podcast here if you don't mind if you're listening on itunes if you're on YouTube or anything like that, you know, make sure you subscribe and hit notifications. That way you get notified whenever we go live on these or do these podcasts. And, uh, you know, one more thing, share it with a friend. I'd sure appreciate it. Help us help others get uh, backyard barbecue going and, and get the best barbecue they possibly can. Um, it's all about uh, keeping the craft alive and the barbecue lifestyle. And, uh, you know, build a smoker. If you need a free set of plans, look in the link down below in the description. There's a couple of different kinds of sets of plans we're giving away for free. I'd sure like to give you a copy. And uh, anyway, till next time, we'll see you later.